is not among they look like i'm saying they look like that's why we have to be very careful uh, we are talking about the oil the oil represent the holy spirit the oil represent the holy spirit now when the holy spirit comes upon you the bible says you receive power and you shall be my witness in jerusalem judea samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth he says the church was born when the holy spirit came on the day of pentecost when it came. and when the church when the holy spirit came we see a lot of you know that's why one of these days we must study the book of acts from chapter 1 to 3 four, so that we see whether with the church that we are in has what the first church has. If the church we are in right now, we are calling this one church. And what we see in the first church is not in this church. We have to be careful. It might not be the church of Jesus. When the Holy Spirit came is when the church was called. And that is the, from that chapter 2, now you realize all the things that the church has to have has been put in chapter 2. From verse 42. And then you continue chapter 3, 4, 5, 6. How? With that power of the Holy Spirit. So much has happened. So much miracles. Understanding of the word of God is given by the power of the Spirit of God. There's somebody who will read a verse and by the time he explains to you, understand better. But there's another place you go when they talk through the word of God, it looks like very boring. You don't even want to hear so when you're talking about oil, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. People have the word, but the Holy Spirit is not active in their life. Two ways we kill the Holy Spirit. I think you can get in chapter number four of the book of this one I'm just reading for you from somewhere. Chapter number four of the book of uh, Of Ephesians verse 30, 31. Maybe from verse 27. Let me read to you. What happens to what 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 quenches the Holy Spirit? Verse 27 says. Let me begin from verse 26. Be ye angry and see not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that is still stole still no more. But rather, let him labor, working with his hands the things which is good, that he may have to give to him that needs. Verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearer. So, the things that the Bible says, don't do, don't do, I want to see what you talk about. Now look at it, what happens. If you do what the Bible is saying not to do from verse 26. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. That one says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake forgive you. Now these things are very active in many of our churches. And this is what kills the power of the Holy Spirit from working in us. So people have the word of God, they read, but they don't look like the word because the Holy Spirit has already been quenched. In First Thessalonians chapter number 5, that verse 18 or 19, the Bible says, do not quench the Holy Spirit. So there are things that will stop the Holy Spirit from working in your life. The lamp is there. You will carry. You have a Bible, yeah? That is the lamp. <laughs> but there is no oil inside. Understanding of the Bible becomes hard when the Holy Spirit is not active in you. So people are going to the Bible, to the church, carrying their Bibles. But they don't have 
a good relationship with the Holy Spirit. Now that makes them not to understand the word of God, number one. Number two, not to apply the word their life and what the Bible says are totally different. Those are the kind of people who will miss the rapture. The major thing that you, 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 you saw what, what it was written in verse 30. This whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption and give not, give not the Holy Spirit of God. Whereby you are sealed unto the day of which is this day of redemption? The day of redemption. You are given a new body and you are no longer going to struggle with this body. That day is the day of rapture. Now if you have grieved the Holy Spirit you will remain here because he cannot help you. Now, I went to this, this book I, I was giving. Many people were taking from me, like when I was in Nairobi. And some of them read that book and they tell me, you know, we are not hearing anything about this teaching that you are, this book you wrote. Anywhere we are not teaching. There's somebody who we schooled with in high school. I sent her a book. She stays in Kenya. He says, we have never heard of this rapture. They're not even talking to us about these things. Yet just somebody is just preaching something else. The rapture is not far. Why? There are pastors who don't understand these things. Why? The Holy Spirit has been quenched. You don't understand what is written there in some. There are some who don't even believe there's something called rapture. The Holy Spirit has not opened your eyes. How would you know? And if you see why they missed that marriage or the, the, the bridegroom, is because they lacked oil. So one of the things that every believer at this time of waiting for the coming of Jesus should do is to cultivate a serious relationship with the Holy Spirit. I'm saying a serious relationship with the Holy Spirit. How do we cultivate the, a serious relationship with the Holy Spirit? Number one. Jesus said the Holy Spirit came to be a witness to me. To lead you into all truth. Number one, you must choose to give yourself to the word of God. That's the first thing. If the word of God is active in your life, the Holy Spirit will naturally take place in you. If the word is not active in you, the word of the Holy Spirit will never be active in your life. So for you to make the Holy Spirit active, you must have enough of the word in you. The word is Jesus. The more you take in the word, the more you live by the truth. The more you accept the truth, the more active the Holy Spirit will be. The more you are obedient to the truth, the more active the Holy Spirit be in your life. When you walk outside the word, you stop the Holy Spirit from functioning. The other way is speaking in tongues. You know when you speak in tongues for a period of time, you get instruction from God. You cultivate your ways, your, 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 your what do you call it? Your relationship with him. God will lead you through his Holy Spirit even after you read the word of God. Yeah, there's a way sometimes the Lord, the Holy Spirit will lead you. If you have an active relationship with Him, there's a way the Word also will lead you. There are churches today where people don't speak in tongues. Are there churches like that? Yes. Those ones will miss rapture very well. I don't know how it will happen for them. Even when you try to speak in tongues, they stop you. And it's the Holy Spirit that prepares you for the day of 
rapture. It is because of that oil they missed that man. And we are reading here in uh, Ephesians 30. He prepares you for that day of redemption. You know, the day you will stop struggling about sin and everything. When you are taken from this, the Bible says, we are given a glorified body. A body that is not subject to sin anymore. We read another thing about that in I think that is about the Holy Spirit. The oil. I know I've not talked much about it. Remember that that's the bit that's the much I discussed about the Holy Spirit. We are talking about the bridegroom is Jesus himself. The marriage is the, the rapture of the church. The bride is the church. So one major thing that makes many not true, and in fact, according to this, we are told, is five, five. So many, there's high chances. Half of the church will not make it into the rapture. But then we see why, why half the church. We see why half the church. The Bible says Jesus is coming. Chapter number 5 of Christian from verse 22. You read. Jesus is coming for a mature church. Spotlessly clean. One of the reasons why you must aim at maturing spiritually is because Jesus is coming. Mature spotlessly clean. I know he's talking about the husband and the wife, how the husband has to grow, has to mature his wife. That's how it speaks, but he's talking about Jesus right there. Let me just read, read it. Uh, the Bible says, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the word, the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. This is the way Jesus now is talking about that. So Jesus is washing the church so that the church will be spotlessly clean, so that he presents himself to himself now what you, you see us do in the church, teaching the word of God every now and then, this is what they are referring to. But we, we present. Now, Jesus is, is, is uh, a washing of water by the word, the church, that he might present it to himself, he says here. A glorious church. A mature church. Without blemish. This is one of the reasons why also you must be committed in the church. Because your maturity in the things of God is dependent on your availability of those programs that specifically has been designed for your growth and maturity in the things of God. So how frequently you appear for the word of God and you hear, you understand. And when you hear the word of God, you prepare. There's a way you prepare. You will not be ignorant. Yes, I think that is enough for today. Amen. We'll talk about second rapture next Sunday. And I'll just be showing you why you should not even think about that second rapture. I think it's already there, you can read. It's about how the devil, uh, the, the Antichrist would be, would be beheading people. Behead. They are, their head is cut off. They got too much pain. They are killed in a very terrible way. In a brutal way. Because you do not receive the mark of the beast. When you receive the mark of the beast, what happens is you become as the devil himself. You cannot be redeemed. You'll go directly to the lake of fire. 
No redemption. So many believers know if we pick the mark of the beast, I've spoken about it, you'll see. So they refuse. And they have not been raptured. So over that period, they will have to suffer. And we don't need it. And the Bible is speak very clear about this. Amen. Father, we are thankful for your word. Even as we are hearing your word, we desire and pray that you inform us in our spirit so that we become alert and alive to this truth. And Lord, we live out the truth even in our time. We also prepare for your coming. Because we know the time is short. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Yeah, I think we can have our offerings as we end our service.